They finally admitted what these wars are all about. Can any of you guys take a guess as to what the reason might be? You know what? Let me just show you what I mean. Remember what they said about when the war happened in the Ukraine? As Russian troops poured across Ukraine's border, kicking off the Russian invasion in late February, something else was happening at the same time in New York. The stock prices of the biggest U.S. weapons manufacturers spiked, many eventually climbing to their highest point in years. War is good business for parts of the economy, uh, historically. It doesn't mean the defense contractors cynically want it. Uh, I know a lot of people in these companies, and they're as heartbroken by the war in Ukraine as the next person. But yes, war is good business for certain parts of the economy. And there you have it, folks. War is good for business. Who cares about innocent lives when you can make a quick buck, right? But like this guy said, I don't believe that these companies are wishing for a war, but I don't think many people would believe that they mind it that much either. As you guys may be aware, I haven't talked that much about Ukraine recently, but still, to this very day, they are still relevant because the war there doesn't seem to have an end. The same thing could be said for the funding that we continue to send over there. You know what I mean, right? And speaking of which, you guys are aware that President Biden's going to ask for like $106 billion in more funding for these different wars, right? By the time this video is up, he might have already asked for it. President Joe Biden calling for around $100 billion. That's with a B, and it's aid for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and border security. The president saying the United States must deepen its support, and he's calling this aid package vital to national security. I know these conflicts can seem far away. And it's natural to ask, why does this matter to America? Well, history has taught us that when terrorists don't pay a price for their terror, when dictators don't pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos and death and more destruction. The Associated Press puts the plant's cost at $105 billion total, $60 billion of which will be for Ukraine going towards replenishing weapons for forces as they fight Russia. $14 billion will be set aside for Israel. The same amount will go towards the southern border. $10 billion will go towards humanitarian efforts, and $7 billion will be set aside for the Indo-Pacific region, including Taiwan. Question time, folks. If you were part of Congress, what's your vote on this request, huh? Just comment a quick yes or no down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to drop a like for the video. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications. Really appreciate that, guys. So getting back on topic. Let's go ahead and follow the money when it comes to these wars, shall we? This business is extremely obvious with a recent earnings call from Raytheon. You know those guys, right? The defense contractor company. So yeah, so a recent earnings call with them had one analyst from Morgan Stanley asking the important question, just how will these wars affect their profits? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and paraphrase here as I might not be allowed to play their clip on YouTube, but, but basically they were asked about the more than $100 billion that the White House is taking for these wars, which includes $50 billion in investments for the U.S. defense industrial base. Valued at more than $100 billion, Raytheon Technologies is the world's second largest aerospace and defense company by sales. Raytheon Technologies Corporation, also known as RTX as of June 2023, is the result of the merger of equals between United Technologies Corporation and Raytheon Company. Completed on April 3, 2020, this merger brought together the rich histories and expertise of both entities. Raytheon Company was founded in 1922 by two engineering roommates, Lawrence K. Marshall and Vannevar Bush. Initially focused on radio equipment manufacturing, Raytheon expanded its capabilities and made significant contributions to the defense industry by the end of the Cold War. The company played a crucial role in the development of radar systems, guided missiles, and advanced electronics. By the late 20th century, Raytheon had become the world's largest producer of guided missiles. And so, Raytheon has the tech and the weapons to arm both Ukraine and Israel, so this package fits in nicely with them, right? So, what did Raytheon say about it? Their CEO said that there's going to be a big ramp up in terms of profits because, again, they're already receiving orders in the billions of dollars. He also said that while the war in Gaza or Israel is a tragic situation, he did say that it's going to lead to additional orders. Wow. Spoken like a true salesman, right? You know this is where our taxpayer money goes, right? I just had a thought, guys. I wonder if things would be so easy if taxpayers had a say as to where their taxes go. I mean, what if, as taxpayers, we ultimately said, this money has to help veterans. This money has to help those on Social Security, SSI, SSDI. This money has to go to small businesses and so on and so forth, right? 
Do you think that the federal government would like that? Would any of you guys like that? And with these weapons for sale, do you think that it actually helps our national security at all? At least one person from the Biden administration doesn't agree, and his name is Josh Paul. You're wondering who's this Josh Paul guy, right? Well, this guy was the former director of congressional and public affairs for the state's Department Bureau of Political Military Affairs. And this is what he had to say about it. What we're talking about, we're talking about the transfer of arms that can last for decades whose purpose is to kill. That's an obvious point, um, but it underlines the gravity of the decisions that we make every single day uh, in the US government and the State Department. Um, Recognizing that, the Biden administration earlier this year issued a conventional arms transfer policy which raised the standard for the transfer of weapons to what they call a more likely than not. If it is more likely than not that weapons the U.S. provides to another country will be used for violations of human rights, uh, they will not be transferred. Um, what we've seen with Israel repeatedly in operations in Gaza in 2009, in 2014, 2021, is massive civilian casualties, thousands of Palestinians killed uh, through a, a relatively indiscriminate use of bombs to destroy buildings. Um, and yet, in this context of this conflict today, uh, where we've already seen, again, thousands of Palestinian casualties, uh, there has been no policy debate. Indeed, there's been a rush to provide arms uh, where normally there is discussion, consideration, and thought. So basically he's saying that the Biden administration isn't thinking at all when they do these types of transfers. They just continue to send weapons like it's candy. And it begs the question, why don't we just prevent these wars from happening in the first place? I mean, we should have a lot of information about these kind of things, right? But here's what the White House has to say when they were asked the very same question. Well, uh, if I understand you're saying that he's rallied the troops and brought allies together, and that all makes sense. But I guess, again, the origin of my question was, why aren't we doing a better job preventing these wars in the first place? What we are doing, and Admiral spoke to this, of course, as he talked about the Middle East, and of course, our, our uh, goal has always been a prosperous Middle East, a peaceful Middle East. He, he literally went into uh, speaking about uh, what the goal has been. Uh, and what we're going to continue to do, make sure that there is peace, right? Make sure that we, we bring our allies and uh, partners together. That doesn't stop. Uh, but at the same time, right, if Russia is going to invade, invade Ukraine, we have to be there for Ukraine, right? Taking over, trying to take over their sovereignty, uh, their democracy. We have to be there, right? If we have to be there for Israel as, they're tr as they fight fighting off a terrorist organization, right? Innocent people are being killed. And so the president's going to be there for that. And so, look, we're, it doesn't stop us, deter us uh, from what we're trying to do more broadly uh, in having these diplomatic conversation. You saw, as I mentioned to one of your colleagues, Australia is coming. We're going to continue that conversation on, on how we're going to uh, help uh, Ukraine and continue to be partners and allies. Uh, but uh, look, we're going to um, do the job that is at hand. That's what the president is focused on. Okay. You know what? I got a question for cringe. When is the president going to focus on the American people? Because I might get hate for criticizing help to foreign nations when all I want is for them to help American first. Like, is helping Americans first, like, you know, something that we shouldn't expect for, from our own leaders? We continue to fund other wars and enrich our weapons manufacturers, but our veterans, our elderly, those on Social Security, do we just forget about those people? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, but, you know, man, things are getting complicated, aren't they? Now, before I go, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for dropping a like for the video. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next video.